Okay, so we're here at Superbooth 2023 with Pitt from uh, Silhouette. Uh, Pitt, what is Silhouette? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Um, maybe I should uh, first summarize a, a little in few, a few words what the Silhouette synthesizer was about, yeah. with which we, uh, what, we, what I started to uh, present two, two years ago. It's a synthesizer which is based on the uh, basic thought to uh, move your hand in front of a camera and uh, trans transform this, uh, this visual grayscale data directly into audio so that you can act directly in the audio waveform with your hand. And you have direct access to, to volume, of course, and to timbre with every tiny move you make. And uh, when you take such structures like this, you get interesting overtone uh, games. And um, what you see here, the blue rectangle is the area where the uh, very grayscale area is, uh, the grayscale data is um, sampled and transformed into the audio. And of course, you can uh, change that area. And if you move it and, and uh, let it modulate, then you get uh, interesting sounds, uh, loops, and something like that. Absolutely. <laughs> And you can load in uh, picture files too. A little bit of uh, video manipulation. And Excellent. movie files. Ah. Um. But this year, something is special, because uh, in the last year I've uh, developed a new um, detail, which was uh, very uh, important for me, because it's uh, the other way around. When, when this is the function to uh, transfer visuals into audio, now I uh, have started to sample, for example, my old Korg MS-20 as an audio file, as an audio sample, and then let it be translated into a, a visual that I can re reuse as a source for the... Oh, <laughs> for the, wow. Uh, for audio the audio inception. thing, and uh, if mm, I'd like to show you, this is the sound from the MS20, and now I'm I'm uh, recorded it. It's too loud. Wait a second. I take a sample, audio sample, and then <laughs> you see this counter here. And uh, this function, uh, where it uh, translates this audio into the, the, the uh, visual file, is at the moment quite slow. <laughs> As you see, that now it's a half a minute to go. Um, so you have to wait, because he's, uh, he's reading this, this sample from one second with the 44, 100 uh, samples to these uh, pixel lines. Uh -huh. uh, each a pixel line is at the moment 320 pixels in. Uh, with and uh, there are tw 240 of them. Now he's counting and uh, translating into the grayscale area. Row and by row. At the moment it takes some time. But only four seconds to go. Not too long. And yeah. then we should see it. Okay. Ah, there it is. Great. <laughs> You've turned the MS20 signal into a video, into a picture file, yeah. and you're now scanning different areas of the picture file to make yeah. new waveforms. Yeah, and uh, you, uh, um, of course, it's not one to one the same thing. It's not. It's not only a sampler. It's, uh, <coughs> it's, it's been transla translated and now back translated. Yeah, so you have great. some translation uh, uh, error, which is uh, the source for creativity. Absolutely. And uh, but if you listen to the to it now. You can hear that filter sweep. Let, let, let's uh, listen once again to the MS-20. Okay, here, now here it's more, more brighter, more sharp, but it's, uh, this is the filter sweep which is here assembled in. You I can kind like of see very it much. visually <laughs> represented. That's and you amazing. can see it. Uh, 
Uh, in fact, uh, as I told you, I, I've uh, only last week I've started to implement it uh, here to the Silhouette One synthesizer because I really wanted to show it at Super Booth, yeah. although it's just at the start. Ne? Because mm. for me, it is so important to close the circle from visual to audio to from audio to visual. So exactly, um, you could you could, for example, sample your voice. Yeah, I have a microphone here, and I've uh, always ex um, made some tests with voice. And what I just wanted to say at the start, when I started to to check this out, I was trying to sample very calm uh, sounds from the MS-20, which I can play really with chords and something like that. But then I uh, tried to uh, check out something more chaotic. And in the end, I uh, even sampled things like this. Uh, noisy sounds. And uh, um, shall we try it? Yeah, why not? Yeah, let's go. Now I have to turn on the microphone. Okay, this is the audio sample. Let's uh, wimple this. By the way, um, the, the word wimpler is, of course, a, a game with words with between visuals and sampler. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I thought I um, create this word to, um, to give it a name. It works I well. Yeah. So I really love the, um, the kind of interface that you have here on this, um, the interaction you have with the physical, the physical touch here. Uh, with the touch screen. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, in fact, it is not a touch screen. Uh, um, not yet. Maybe in, f in some future versions of Silhouette, maybe I will use a touch screen. For some function, it would be good to, to act in on the video screen. Yeah. But this is uh, because uh, I'm a guy who used to play very a lot with, with uh, hardware stuff. I, I love hardware stuff more than um, uh, VSTs. And so I wanted. Um, yeah, here's the wimple. You see it. This is this is the shaker. Uh, but let's first talk uh, about the controller. So I, um, the first prototype I had had I don't know 80 knobs or something like that. It was it was never working, <laughs> but it was based on on my wish to um, have access to all the parameters. But uh, mm -hmm. colleagues and friends of mine t told me, hey. You are using a computer inside. Maybe you couldn't use pages or something like this. And then I uh, uh, invented this with a where you have directly access to four pages. And I always thought about it has to be you have to access get quick access from everywhere when you're playing here with the keyboard and with the hand uh, changing the knobs, and that you're quickly to the di to the place where you can change the pages. That was. Uh, um, the goal of it, and if you can look inside here, you will see that it's not touch controllers or something like this. It's real hardware knobs, which are. Uh, can you see it, or shall I make a light? Um, it's really on PCBs, very thin, one centi centimeters, and these PCBs are collected here in a, in a long one, in the sample uh, which samples all the PCBs together, the and ribbon. then. It's been sent with that flat cable to the back where the uh, Arduino board is inside and uh, the Arduino board reads the uh, analog data of the knobs and uh, the buttons and sends it to the computer and to the pure data software. Brilliant. But let's have a look at the uh, wimple here. Yeah, let's have a look at the wimple. And l uh, an ear, let's have an ear. And <laughs> this is really weird for me at the moment because I start start to take this and okay okay how can how can I use it in music I don't know yet yeah. but uh, it's uh, but it's definitely interesting in yeah. somewhere because um, now as you as you know in in creative works there's always a, a, an element of random and things that that surprise you or mistakes which are the, the source for good ideas definitely and so i'm really Can you this has really started i will a animate now this this uh yeah that's exactly what i was going to ask I was going to ask if you can an animate this, this uh, window that you have. The thing is, I would never have programmed this. But if you if you just check it out and then... 
uh, wimble it and then it's there and you can try it and oh, oh okay I, I will use this for a for a beat or something like that I ah, yeah, Chris this is the other thing I wanted to tell you uh, um, mainly what happened in the last year um, I think when we met last year is that I was uh, uh, presenting my prototype and I think I had one customer uh, at that time and he had more to say the second prototype but then I got uh, um, people who asked for silhouette synthesizers international and the last year I've uh, built um, five wow. instruments Excellent. plus this one plus the, the first customer so now it's seven silhouette synthesizers in the world Amazing. and well the done. eighth one is now uh, under construction in my uh, in my workshop, and I'm very, very proud of this. Yeah. And um, when I uh, then last year I uh, I started uh, shipping them international, and there was a big point I had to learn because I've never done this before. And such a big, heavy, and uh, and fragile machine sh to ship uh, over the Atlantic, or even only to ship to to France, it was uh, complicated because it broke right. when I sent it in the in the, the this 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 thing broke. Uh, on the way with, the, with the very secure, yeah, 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 and I this imagine. was very, really hard for me because it was a lot of time. And uh, uh, but then I, um, by um, by chance, I found somebody who could make this uh, this controller plexiglass thing in a factory. And he said to me, "Hey, your material is not good. You use plexiglass; it's much too, it breaks. If you if you if you will bend it, it breaks." And he said, "You have to use PET." that, that uh, material for the plastic, plastic. Uh, mm. bottles. And it, it showed it to me, a prototype, and it like, oink, 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 oink. Uh, you can't break it, you have to take this. Ne? And this is, uh, this is what I learned last year, to make the machine much more stable, just in its uh, physics. Ne? Uh, screw, uh, lock everything inside, make the new controller, learn uh, which, which uh, delivery service I can choose, to which, are, uh, which I have some kind of uh, experience with shipping heavy instruments, which are fragile, to USA, for example. And, th and now it worked, and uh, the, the one, the eighth machine I'm building at the moment is also a customer in USA. I have three customers in USA. Well and for me, it's totally uh, wow. And the, the last thing I'm going to tell you is, uh, is what, what happened with, uh, with the music, with the sound. Um, I've made a lot of music in my life. And uh, when this, uh, this uh, project came into my life, and I really started to take make this every day, I, of course, the, my output of music uh, became less and less, <laughs> fewer and fewer. And, but now there are these artists and these customers who make music themselves with a the machine, and they sent the, uh, their sound files to me and their tracks. Great. And this was a great moment when I noticed, uh, I noticed this is kind of sharing because I do all the things to, to think about what could be a great idea to implement, and, and they are playing. They have the time, and, and they let me, and hey, the whole weekend I was sitting at the machine. Great. I don't have the time to sit the whole weekend mm. at the machine. And this is really great, That's because so I've changed the position yeah. of making music. It's still making music, but via the interface. Yeah. That is really strange. And for those people who bought it, do the what sort of outputs are on the back? Like, does it have stereo output, MIDI input, MIDI output? What are the sort of okay. connections that it offers? Yeah, at the moment here is the stereo output and uh, MIDI in and out, the traditional ones, the five pin. Excellent. <laughs> and uh, oh, my machine doesn't have it, but the new machine do does have here a headphone out. Oh, <laughs> good. And at the back there's for the damper pedal. And what is now new, the, the new um, challenge is the audio input. Um, with my machine and the older machines, they use and they got to go from the back inside to the computer, which is a Mac Mini, to get in the back <laughs> back microphone input. But oh it works. Wow. It's, it's going here, and uh, here's a, a little uh, slot, and you can uh, do it in there. But the new machine which I'm building will be have an audio input here. Yeah, that will make with sense. With, with uh, phantom power and so Great. And what I also else? see that you have some acetates printed off here, and I wonder if you could like you could make acetates for like the MS20, and you could have yeah, different I've synthesizers and use them <laughs> as acetates <laughs> together I on did, the yeah, screen. I did, but the the printing was not so well. Oh wow! Yeah, this is one. Um, Thought of it. That's great, man. You see, the the printing is not so well. It's much too uh, uh, correctly to to. 
Sí. I, it was my printer in my home office, so Great. I have to check it out. Maybe with like a square wave, with something eight bits, you could you could do. Something. But what you hear now? Here and see, this is again or uh, again a filter suite with a with a uh, raised resonance. Well, it looks and sounds fantastic, Pip. Yeah, thank you very uh, much. Thank you Pitt. so much for showing it us, thank and uh, you. good luck with the with your future endeavors with Silhouette. Thank you, thank you. Have a have a nice day. Mm.